Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Phil Rowley. On today's show, we're coming to you from Southwest Manitoba, the Parklands region to be specific, home of some of North America's best stillwater trout fisheries. We're based out of the Russell Inn. We're gonna have access to a number of these great lakes. It's late fall, it's crisp, it's even cold sometimes. And we're gonna show you how the smallest flies can catch you the biggest fish. It's gonna be a great show. We hope you learn a lot. Okay, let's set the stage. It's late fall, early October. The air temperatures are crisp and cool. The water temperatures are dropping. We're getting into the low 50s. These are the temperatures that are gonna stimulate trout to feed. They're gonna feed aggressively. They're gonna come into the shallows less than 10 feet deep. We're situated right against the tules here. It's seven or eight feet deep right back in there. They can easily navigate through the cattails or along the perimeter of these tule beds and they're gonna be feeding on anything leeches, bait fish, immature damsels and dragons, scuds. This is where small flies for big fish can really pay off. Let's see if I can sweep this right out the point. That's better. Fish on, fish on. Oh, it feels a little better. Oh yeah, we have a nice brown trout on. Nice brown trout, right off the point. What, that's one of the structures you wanna look for, the little points. Minnows will gather there. That's where predators are gonna hang out, the smallest piece of structure. Try to get the side pressure into the fish. I have to come forward here. I think I've got them well hooked. We wanna put pressure on them, but we don't wanna horse them. Using six weight rods here. Nymph lines, indicator style lines. Oh, nice brown, beautiful colors, beautiful colors. And that was a subtle pull down. Wasn't, you think a fish this big would be aggressive. It was just a delicate pull down. He just swam up, put those big jaws over the fly and pulled it down. You have to use indicators here. We've got lots of broken off tulies in there, lots of things to foul up on, so the indicator is your best option here. We're four feet down, single fly. I'm a big advocate of droppers, we're legal, but we tend to go single fly at this time of the year because there's so much other structure in there, broken off weeds, that you can have a big fish like this run you into the weeds and that upper fly or lower fly, whatever the fish has taken, the unhooked can become a real liability for you. There we go, he's starting to tire. My rule is I don't want to bring a fish, a fresh fish in within the radius of the rod, the diameter of the rod, because it's just, we're double anchored here, so we don't get negatively affected by the wind. And I just don't want a fresh fish full of energy coming in. Look at the hump on that guy. I want him to get his head up and there he goes into the basket. Wow, what a brown trout. Now that is a monster. And here, let's give you a look. That is a beautiful fish. Look at the markings. Look at that hump on that big male. He's in shallow water, feeding on small minnows, baby damselfly nymphs, small dragonflies, scuds, water boatmen, back swimmers, anything he can get that big jaw his around. He's stocking up. Look at the belly on that. And off he goes. Hope to see you next year. Small flies for big fish in the fall. It's a tough tactic to beat. It's just so effective. Today, Russell, Manitoba, Canada is our Stillwater hub for the week. The town of Russell offers amazing access to the world-class trout lakes located within the parkland region of southwest Manitoba. Two of my favorite waters include Patterson and the slightly smaller Tekarik Lake. Both of these lakes are full of feisty rainbow and brown trout, many of them reaching trophy proportions. The Russell Inn is a perfect base camp. In addition to the close proximity to Patterson and Tekarik, the Russell Inn is centrally located to other fantastic lakes including West Goose, Corstaphine, 
purse, and twin renowned for its aggressive tiger trope. What makes the Russell a unique destination, I think, is that we haven't forgotten what hospitality is all about. So we like to find out what each guest's needs are, and then we like to deliver that. Uh, we open our restaurant early so that uh, fly fishers can eat early and get out on the lakes, and we'll keep it open late for them too um, in the evenings. We have a cluster of services. We have Subway, Tim Hortons. We have a restaurant, a full-service pub, um, that provides food service late into the evening. We have all-inclusive packages as well as a special fly fishing rate uh, that runs in May, June and September, October every year. So we're very diversified so we can provide really whatever anyone needs, whether they're traveling as an individual or with their family or with a corporate group. Fish on, fish on. Let's work this cast. I've been working close to the tulies and then casting out into deeper water as well. You want to sweep all the area. Don't keep working the same areas. I've been playing with a number of different retrieves. I've been letting it sit, dead drift, and just letting the natural wave action move the fly. I've been doing slow strips to raise and pause the fly slow hand twists, and if the wind allows, I'll also pitch the odd fly up into the wind and just let it wind drift back towards me. Works very well with leech patterns, balanced leech patterns, and micro leech patterns. So those are your four sort of retrieve options with indicators, and you experiment them, experiment with them rather, to see which one the fish seem to like better. Oh, a nice little rainbow, full of energy. This cold water really stimulates their aggressive feeding nature and small patterns are perfect for them. We took the bruised leech on the bottom. Out comes the fly already. Got a little belly on them already. Let's let them go. Come back to be a bigger fish. We'll catch them next year. So there you have it, your four retrieve options. You can just pitch it out there and let the natural wave action animate the fly. You can strip the fly back using six to 12 inch pulls. It'll raise and flutter the fly. Don't do that a lot, but just slowly cover the water, a slow hand twist, or you can pitch the fly upwind and let the natural wave action bring the fly back towards you and you just gather in the slack. Pick an option um, that the fisher seem to like and then stick with it. So you're always experimenting. Fish on. Fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. All right, we've got a, not sure what, whether this is a brown or a rainbow, but we're working right close. Oh, it's another brown. Oh, it's a nice brown. Working right close to the tulies where the food is. Again, prime habitat for small bait fish, damselfly nymphs, leeches. This is the supermarket. This is where fish come to feed. So you need to be there so you can pick up those that cruise by. And we're keeping our cast nice and short. When you're fishing these indicator methods, which are well suited for such shallow conditions, I'm basically about six, no, nope, seven feet down. And uh, if I cast too far in this chop, I won't be able to see any subtle takes. And this one has taken one of my balanced leeches on the, on the point. A bruised leech, which is a black and blue combination. But just about any colors will work at this time. Your blacks, your olives, browns, and your reds. Oh, and the fly pulled out just as I got her in the net. There we go, a nice, beautiful female, Tacharic brown. Tacharic's one of them, less than an hour away, one of the many prime still waters you can access through a stay at the Russell Inn. So, just gonna put that fish down, and off she goes. Wow, what a beautiful fish. During the fall months, cool air temperatures and wind are often your constant companions. You need to be prepared. First, it starts with how you dress for the day. Have a wicking layer, a fleece layer. I'm wearing a buff to keep my neck warm. If it gets really extreme, I've got my toque as well. Waders and a rain jacket help to keep the wind away from you. 
We don't see rain very much here in the prairies during this time of the year, but we can have wind and this helps act as a windbreaker for you. When you're moving from point A to point B, a pair of fingerless mitts works well. You can cover your hands, keep those digits warm, keep you in the game. A cheap pair of waterproof gloves like these for raising and lowering ropes. If your hands get wet, have a simple hand towel on hand. Dry your hands quickly, keep your hands dry, you'll be good to go. And when it gets extreme, zero or slightly sub-zero conditions, a catalytic heater can really save the day. So keep these things in mind when you're on the water to make the most of your experience and be prepared for the conditions. Fish on. Oh, he's taking the leech on the bottom. Oh, it's a nice brown trout, nice brown trout. Just again, working these small flies parallel, using the wind to our advantage and just basically letting the flies, oh, nice jump. Letting those flies just dangle and be animated just by the wave action. It's a cool day, cool water temperatures. We don't need to move our flies that quickly. Oh, into the bag she come. There he is. Cruising the shallows, small minnows, scuds, little water boatmen, baby damsels, small food sources in the fall work wonderful for these beautiful fish. Look at him. Let's let him go. By the fall, the major hatches for the season are complete. Staple prey items such as scuds, leeches, baitfish, and immature damselfly and dragonfly nymphs are key menu items. Your pattern selections should reflect these staples. On average, your fly should range from number 8 through number 14. When visiting the parklands region of southwest Manitoba, here is a cross-section of flies to consider adding to your fall stillwater fly box. The gold bead flashback pheasant tail nymph, Pequod, the ruby eye leech, the coral booby, and don't forget balanced flies such as the bruise leech and the ice minnow. As with most still water situations, I favor six or seven weight rods ranging from nine and a half to 10 feet in length. Long rods offer a number of benefits, including helping you to create open loops, which eases casting indicators. They help facilitate good roll casts. And once you hook a fish, the ability to steer and control the trout until you subdue it and safely net it. Fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Fish on, big brown, he's eating the booby. <laughs> excellent, excellent. We've got fish, we've had fish taking here near this beaver lodge and got them on the washing line technique. And these beaver lodges are just prime structure here onto Carrick. We're just east of Russell Inn, an hour away from, to the east of Russell Inn. You've got to Carrick, Patterson, Corstaphine, Pibus, and these are all excellent lakes to visit should you come here and visit the parklands. But nice brown trout here. It's a nice brown. He's got the booby just in the corner of his mouth, so just gotta grab that out of there. Oh, it fell out. Booby, we'll show you that in a second. There is a nice brown trout. Nice average, maybe a little. Smaller than average in some of the lakes, but gorgeous specimen nonetheless. Available to you, just a short drive from Russell. And you can catch these a variety of techniques, these small flies for small fish, strike indicators, slow sinking lines, and particularly the washing line technique I used to take this one. So we'll just let this one go, and we'll see if we can get another. So what am I talking about when I say the washing line technique? Well, it's a technique from England, and it involves a two fly setup, okay? And in this case, I've got a ruby eyed leech on the dropper and I got a buoyant, this is a peachy colored booby. Clearly nothing in a lake looks like this. This fly has foam eyeballs, it has lots of attraction, it wobbles and shakes, and it triggers an aggressive response. But the other benefit it has is this buoyant fly helps keep this fly suspended as though it was on a washing line. So I've got that blended perfectly with my line choice today being a clear intermediate still water line. And that's the washing line setup. 
perfect for sinking lines, and it also works on surface flies too during emergencies and things like that. So add the washing line to your repertoire. It's a great little trick and it really works well. Today I use two liter setups. For my slow sinking lines, such as the Hover and Clear Intermediate, I used a standard 9-foot leader tapered to 2X. I then added 2 to 3 feet of 2X or 3X fluorocarbon to the leader using a triple surgeon's knot. For my floating line, I used a 7.5-foot leader, a quick-release indicator, and a small number 14 barrel swivel. I attached the barrel swivel to the leader using an improved clinch knot. I then attach two feet of 2X fluorocarbon leader to the swivel, once again using an improved clinch knot. My overall leader length was no more than 12 feet. When you're fishing small flies for big fish, the line selections are pretty simple. It's a shallow water game. You want to be using floating lines for with and without indicator presentations, Clear intermediates, hover lines, we're working shallow water, less than 10 feet, often less than five. It's a simple selection, and that's really all you need to bring. About the only other line you might consider is a fast sinking line if you're fishing boobies over shallow, clear water where you're using the attractive pulling power of a booby to drag fish. That fast sinking line pulls the booby down, and you can use that fast, erratic retrieve to entice a take. In the fall, water temperatures are typically cool. Today we're in the low 50s. We're hoping to even see the temperatures drop lower. Retrieve speeds are critical. You want to match your retrieve speed to the water temperature. So generally, it's going to be slow retrieves. Slow strips, slow hand twists. Most of your food organisms are small. They don't move very fast, and the trout their metabolism is starting to slow as the water's cool, so you need to keep your flies slow when you're retrieving them. Probably the only exception is a booby. We fish that aggressively, we fish it fast to draw that aggressive predatory response. The hang is a technique that every still water fly fisher should learn and use. After casting and allowing the line to sink, retrieve your fly as you normally would. At the end of the retrieve, prior to recasting, begin a slow, gradual rod raise. Continue to gather the line with your retrieve hand using a slow hand twist retrieve. As the fly is near the surface, pause or hang the fly or each fly for a period of time. If you see a fish following or rising up to the fly, allow them to take it. If there are no followers, cast your line to begin a new presentation. It is the rod raise that changes the fly's speed and direction. Changes that induce a following fish to take, making the hang such a deadly technique. There is perhaps no easier method to increase your catch rate on lakes than incorporating the hang at the end of every presentation, no matter the line or fly choice. Nice fish here. Just an incredible fishery here in the parklands region of southwest Manitoba. The Russell Inn. It's a great base camp, so, so many good lakes to give a try. You've got to the north, you've got Twin, West Goose, Purse. To the east, you've got to Carrick, Patterson, Corstaphine, Pibus. It's a nice, nice fish. These small flies in the fall for big fish. I know it's probably some of you out there thinking that big fly, big fish, on these productive lakes, it's just such a small prey is probably easier for them to catch. Nice brown here. Just a wonderful experience here. Beautiful colors in the fall. Browns are fall spawners. They can't really spawn successfully in these lakes, but they certainly get dressed up for the dance and they're just beautiful fish. Always get my bottom fly. The Balanced ruby eye, all wrapped up. <laughs> He's eating that flashback pheasant tail. Imitates a little little bait fish. Surprising, what a great fish. That is why you come to the parklands. Look at that beautiful brown. Look at the colors, big male. There's bigger fish, believe it or not, in here in Patterson. Wow, 
big rainbows, big browns, small flies for big fish. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Ready to go, off he goes. Wow, what a wonderful experience. I want to thank the Russell Inn for putting us up and allowing us to access this entire region. Hope you've learned a lot. Remember, small flies for big fish in the fall, they really work. For more information on this show and others in our informative series, don't forget to visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. Check out our YouTube page and don't forget to like us on Facebook. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.